Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. In this episode I will investigate if a sheep microscope can be useful for a scale modeler. Nowadays you can buy a digital microscope made for electronics repair and soldering for far less than 100 euros. And since my eyes are not getting better with age, I'm interested to see if there is something I can do to reduce the strain on my eyes. I bought this product a while ago and I have used it a couple of times for soldering in surface mounted electronics, which is a great application for it, by the way. The product packaging is full of nice buzzwords like HD High, Super Battery, Smart Portable. And judging from the box art illustrations, this is a really versatile tool. Yeah. So, when you open the box you are greeted with a user guide on top of the microscope unit itself. The microscope unit powers on in a second and everything seems to work fine. Well, I have already checked it beforehand, so I know that it works. It comes with a USB charger cable, but there is no USB data connectivity for a PC. This is the cheapest version of the microscope, so it gets shipped with a somewhat adjustable stand with a super sticky gel suction cup at the bottom. And finally you get a wall plug charger. The assembly is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is to snap two pieces together. The stand sticks quite good to the cutting mat on a bench. Uh, I'm not sure for how long though, and what happens with it when the adhesive gets dirty. Alright, let's jump directly into painting the knobs and dials on a side panel for a 172 scale cockpit. For this I'm using Vallejo paints applied with a sharpened toothpick. I think it's working quite well, but the high magnification and limited field of view makes the orientation very difficult. Okay, I think that the result is far better than what I should have achieved using plain eyesight or if I were using my magnification lamp. However, the stock stand places the optics very close to the bench and there isn't much room to work on larger objects. The depth of field is also really shallow, which makes it difficult to work on big objects or objects that are not flat. So, can we do something to improve the microscope? 
One thing is to upgrade the stand to give it a more variable magnification. After thinking about designing my own stand, I checked Thingiverse and I found something that looked more or less exactly like what I had in mind. So, after downloading the files, I prepared the print for my new Prusa Mini. Most of the parts will print without any special pre-processing, but the base plate has an overhang that will need support. After tinkering with this for a while, I decided to use a different approach. I will split the base plate into two parts and glue them together afterwards. I think it will look nicer and I don't have to clean up the scars from the support. Now it's time for my Prusa Mini to get to work to print all the parts. It took me roughly 20 hours to print all the parts, but they came out really nice. The axle was cut from a 6mm steel rod. Some cleanup was needed for the 3mm screw holes. I used M3 screws and nuts. The pinion and dials were pressed onto the steel rod with some use of force. I actually used the vise for that because I couldn't do it by hand. And after that the rail and the end stop were attached. The next step will be to glue the base plate and the bracket together. But first I need to make sure that all the joints are flat and rugged. I will try a new trick that I saw a while ago. The parts are printed with PLA and I will use acetone to weld the parts together. It works much in the same way as using Tamiya Extra Thin to weld styrene. I apply a generous amount of acetone on both surfaces and after that I press the parts together. Finally, I touch up the seams by brushing on acetone.
After 20 minutes of curing, I can assemble the rail to the base and the microscope stand is finished. Ok, let's try it out. What you see here is the zoom dialed in to the same magnification as the stock stand. By increasing the distance and adjusting the focus, we are able to widen the field of view. Let's do some more painting and check if this is an improvement. It is definitely more easy to keep the orientation. But there isn't much improvement of the depth of field, so we have to live with that. I would say that the end result is pretty similar, but the benefit is that the improved stand will give you more flexibility and the adjustable magnification is more adapted for this type of use. You don't have to DIY a better stand for this microscope. You can buy them bundle or as separate items for around 15 euros extra. One final feature that I want to mention is the recording function that is included in the microscope. The user guide and the user interface says that 1080p is supported, which makes me think that I can record with full HD resolution. That is not correct, it is only support 1280 times 720 resolution, which uh, would be equivalent to standard HD. So is this a useful tool for a scale modeler? It can be useful for detail painting on small flat surfaces. And I would even say that with a proper stand, it can be helpful to assemble small photo etch parts. The shallow depth of field makes it very limited for other tasks. Thank you for watching and I hope that you found this episode interesting. Take care, keep on modeling and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.